Hello, I'm Will from Creeper, and these are my show stories. The first ever Creeper show happened at the Joiners in Southampton. Um, we had started the band to be a band that would support other touring acts when they came through. But like the reaction to the EP when it first came out was so cool that uh, our local promoter was like, you have, to, you have to headline. I think he was like trying to make some money. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, he was like, you have to headline. I didn't want to do it. I felt really awkward about it. But eventually he talked us into it. Um, and it was wild. It was actually um, the first show where I didn't, um, I wasn't wearing Dr. Martens. It's the only show I ever played where I wasn't wearing Dr. Martens. I was wearing like Nikes, <laughs> which is weird. Um, but yeah, uh, we, we actually um, played some shows at the joiners the other day and printed up a t-shirt uh, for like an anniversary shirt with a, a, a picture from that show in the back with the Nikes in full shot, which is embarrassing. But you know, that's the truth. Uh, it was a great show, uh, sold out. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the start of the journey for us, I suppose. I mean, we weren't used to it. We were used to playing to nobody <laughs> before then. The show I was most nervous about beforehand, well, we played uh, Reading and Leeds uh, main stage a few years ago, and uh, Post Malone was on after us. And Post Malone wouldn't normally be after Creeper. He'd normally be much higher up the bill, you know? Um, but what happened was they'd booked him ages before he got massive. And so now, we're in this unique scenario where our fast punk band is playing before Post Malone on the main stage of Reading and Leeds. And uh, I watched this wave of people in bucket hats and little kind of, um, uh, you know, fanny packs over their shoulders just emerge over the, over the sides of, uh, of the hill. And I was like, they're going to hate this. They're not going to like this at all. But I have to do it because that's what I'm paid here to do. <laughs> and so I was so nervous to go out, but it was um, actually amazing. They were actually a lot more responsive than, you, than I imagined. And, um, and yeah, like I, I, I uh, shouldn't have been so worried, I think, in the end. It was uh, quite, quite a moment for us, I think. My proudest onstage moment uh, was actually happened fairly recently. We did um, a download festival, the pilot, just now, and um, it was uh, we were asked to headline one of the stages. They could only get UK bands over, so we uh, were bumped up to headlining the, the second stage, which is a big thing for us. We always saw Creeper as a band that would love to do headline shows at festivals, and that if we ever had the chance to do it, we throw it, we pull out all the stops to make it a, a spectacular a spectacle, you know, and. Um, we, we, we worked really, really hard on it with the limited uh, budgets and stuff we had uh, to try and make it really special. And I felt at the end when we were doing Misery, uh, particularly then, it was a really unique moment in time for us as people, but also kind of like a unique moment in time for us as a band. Uh, it, like, it was like time stood still and uh, yeah, re like really, really crushingly um, emotional after such a long period of time off. So yeah, that's probably my most proud moment, uh, pulling that off. Ah, biggest onstage disaster. I was on tour with Pierce the Veil um, and we were in Europe somewhere and I bought one pair of skinny jeans with me. And these aren't like regular jeans. I don't know if you can see that uh, in your living rooms at home or wherever you're watching this. They're kind of like stretchy little boys, you know? Um, they're like elastic. Um, anyway, I bought one pair of jeans for this like two month long tour. Of course, they started ripping uh, after wear and tear. Why did I do that? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, guys. Anyway, I did. Um, and the hole started growing bigger and bigger in my crutch uh, to the point where midway through one of the shows I think we might have been in Germany somewhere that the, the hole got so big that it's revealed my, my whole box of shorts and my tour manager had to tape me gaffer tape me up like a diaper out of gaffer tape around, <laughs> around my crutch to stop me revealing myself um, unwillingly um, to, um, to the young people who had the show <laughs> so yeah disaster big disaster Oh, the dream show for us. I mean, we, we're slowly ticking off them off one by one. We really wanted to play uh, at it, like, like at the Hammersmith in, in, in uh, London. We got to do it with Baby Metal because that's where David Bowie retired the Spiders from Mars. Um, but for us, like I suppose, uh, like we always wanted to do Jules Holland or something like that, which is not necessarily a venue, but a gig like that would be would have been something that would mean a lot to us because I used to watch lots of uh, like Top of the Pops and I used to watch the old Go Whistle Test, they used to have a DVD, all the old Go Whistle Test stuff. Something like that in a television studio would be something that would be really in, uh, important to us. So something like that. But in terms of a live gig, I don't know, Glastonbury would be a cool one for us because we don't really fit in there. And I think that would be a fun, uh, a fun one because of its history, you know? <laughs> 